We are entering a new phase where central banks can pump up markets indefinitely and consequences are never felt. Money will flow non-stop and everyone will be given free cash. Unicorns will do all of the heavy lifting and rainbows will be in abundance in the desert. The Yeti and the Sasquatch will find their way into sitcoms streamed online to be played in front of people who aren't even paying attention as they scroll through their phones. It's a magical world, thanks to the central banks. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. A little bit of ridiculousness to begin today. I wanted to highlight what's happening with individuals and their personal economy. The issues that they have to deal with. This is very serious because all of those out there are simply trying to figure out where can I make a quick buck? How to get rich fast. The get rich quick schemes are always the most successful, at least in the short term, for those pushing them, not for those who are trying to take it on. I'll show you at the end of this video how many people have tried to get into day trading and they suggest that single digit people are actually able to sustain it just a little while. Now, what we are dealing with right now is a tale of two stories. As I have discussed in previous videos, you've got one group of people making more money than ever and the rest of the people, the majority of the people who are doing um, really probably some of the worst that they've ever experienced in their life, worse than the financial crisis. Many hadn't even recovered from the financial crisis. You look at all this data, starts to make a lot of sense, but not the official story that they tell you. That's why I wanted to cover some info. Let's begin. One in three workers had their pay cut in 2020. Number one, this is only a sample. I'll show you in a second. I think it's like a thousand people. That's not going to tell us the whole story, but I look at this survey. I look at the next survey, put all these surveys together and everything starts to make sense. It all really ties in together. You get varying numbers depending on where you look and, and so on, but it doesn't matter because to me, it just shows us how serious this situation is for so many people, whether that's 50% of the people, 60% of the people, or 49%, it doesn't matter. You, you see all these different numbers, but when I look at this, it's really, really telling. Now, these one in three workers, many of them had had their pay cut and then it was brought back up. Others had their pay cut, it was brought up, but not to where it was before. So many people today are living paycheck to paycheck, and that was statistics coming from, let's say, 2019 or earlier in 2020. So imagine if your salary gets cut, what are you gonna do to survive? That's why so many have to go to the food banks, that's why so many are struggling to stay alive. More people have moved back in with their parents or they're cohabiting, and they're trying to make things work, trying to make ends meet. This is a situation, not for just some people, but millions of people. Roughly one in three full-time workers have experienced a pay cut right now, 2020. Now this shows you that this is coming for a group of people, 984 professionals surveyed in November, but what we are experiencing all over, not just the United States and Canada and Europe, but look at Australia, look at New Zealand, everywhere, they're dealing with basically the same situation. So much had closed down, they're unable to bring the revenue in, businesses laid off a bunch of people, and you had issues that ultimately had this domino effect. We haven't experienced the worst of it yet, we will get to that, but as of right now, it's still not looking good for too many. And that is quite sad because the solutions that they've provided is always the same. They're going to help those at the top. They give crumbs to those at the bottom so that they're all good. They say, well, you know, we've been giving you $300. Isn't that sufficient? And then meanwhile, they buy billions and billions of bonds of the biggest corporations in the world. They do this because they know that as long as they give you some crumbs, you'll stay silent. This is the bread and circus. This article was back from September, but I just wanted to show you that there are so many different pieces of data. Same situation though, more workers hit with pay cuts than in the last recession and stagnant wages could linger. 
This presents us with a big issue for 2021 and beyond. Are people going to be getting their raises? If they can make you work at, let's say, 80% of where you were at previously, well, why not? Why not just keep you at 80%? Why bring you back up? Just make you work harder, right? You want to get back up to that 100%. So put them at 80%, keep them there, and say you got to prove yourself. You got to prove yourself and come review time. We will see what we can do. The economy is not so fantastic. You know, you hear it all the time. You, you know, the economy is just, it's not what it was before. We don't have that growth anymore. Oh, but the stock of the company had done really well. Yeah, well, well, you know, what can we do? Performance, uh, performance issues here. Can't give you that raise this time. Sorry about that. Here's why these seven U.S. mall owners, including Simon, are in trouble, SMP warned. So we are talking about something here in this article that I brought up so many times before. That is the commercial mortgage-backed securities. The articles will, in fact, point to it. But do you think you're going to see this on the main page? Is this what they're going to talk about? Of course not. They don't want to. Nobody wants to touch this stuff. It's not cool. It's not trendy. All right? All the political nonsense, that's what they're doing. They dangle the carrot in front of you. They, they keep you stringing along. It'll just go on and on and on. And meanwhile, the puppeteers are deciding each and every action. But people don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that. And that's unfortunately why I've lost so many subscribers. Part of the reason why I've lost so many subscribers, part of it is also because I'm actually highly unlikely to come up in the search results and that that is confirmed because if i look at my statistics almost 100 percent of my views from all of my videos are from subscribers so that tells you that it's simply not coming up in people's radar anyway let's look at this here smp has picked seven publicly traded mall owners that face exceptional risks in the coming months they're listed right here if you're interested but underneath that, something that I need to bring to you, it is what I cover regularly, and that's the store closures. Now, when I show you core sites information, it's as far as I'm concerned, it's completely understated. If you looked at the numbers I had shown you um, of the different businesses, I mean, it was at 110,000 businesses, right? Now, this is a different story, but then you look at this. Store closures have been one of these landlords' biggest headaches in 2020. Over 11,000 retail locations have been announced for closures so far this year, and this is according to to tracking by CoStar Group. So uh, the last time I checked on Core Site, it was something like 8,400. Here it's saying 11,000 already. We're basically at record levels regardless. So all of these different types of businesses are closing, whether it's you know your mom and pop shop, maybe it's a hair salon, the nail place, maybe it's a restaurant, it doesn't matter. All of these different types of businesses are closing. What does that do? I've seen so many examples where they're saying this store used to have 60 people. Now it only has two. This store used to have four people. Now it's just the owner and on and on and on. And you can't carry that on forever. It will have an impact, not just temporarily. It's not just six months, not just until everything goes back to normal. Absolutely not. Mall REIT risk factors, falling foot traffic, and mounting vacancy rates. If you want to take a look, all the information is right here. It, it's just interesting to me to see how this is unfolding step by step. Wealthy Americans largely untouched by the recession and eager for more living space have been on a home buying binge. Demand for multi-million dollar homes. Looking at this information I just saw coming out of places like Miami and LA and so on. But anyway, this is talking about demand for million dollar homes is growing faster than any other price tier in the uh, US housing boom. In October, applications for mortgages larger than $766,000 dollars jumped 60 percent this is unbelievable you can see the chart down at the bottom there i just think it's interesting that this k shape continues to go on where some are doing so well and a large percentage unfortunately are not 
Ray Dalio stressed the importance of diversification in a Reddit Ask Me Anything event on Tuesday where he said that a flood of money and credit was unlikely to recede. So here's this quote here. I think it's interesting because it is what we discuss on this channel. Assets will not decline when measured in the depreciating value of money. This is something because when you see what they're doing, all of the actions they're taking, it's pretty clear. I believe that with the enormous amount of debt and money that's been created and will be created in the future, the most important thing to pay attention to is the value of debt and money relative to the value of assets and other currencies. So we are measuring these assets in dollars, for instance. So is that actually worth any more or are we devaluing the currency and the central banks have the audacity to tell us they can barely get to 2% inflation? change in m2 and velocity of m2 you could see right here unbelievable i mean the m2 look at the m1 i had a comment talking about how m2 is not a good statistic to look at there's no inflation there absolutely no inflation because it includes savings and so on look at the m1 just look at the m1 look at the m3 look at any form of money Whatever you want to measure it by, whatever currency you want to measure it in, it has gone up at, at such an astronomical level. And anyway, look at, at the bottom there, you're seeing the velocity of money. Now it's come off the bottom somewhat, we see a little bounce, but it is just, it's been falling for two decades now. This article and the next chart I show you will be from Real Investment Advice. They have fantastic information. I always try to give them a little shout out whenever I can. The issue of margin debt. This exuberance requires fuel, which brings us to margin debt. Quote, margin debt is not a technical indicator for trading markets. What margin debt represents is the amount of speculation that is occurring in the market. In other words, margin debt is the gasoline which drives markets higher as the leverage provides for the additional purchasing power of assets. However, leverage also works in reverse as it supplies the accelerant for more significant declines as lenders force the sale of assets to cover credit lines without the regard for the borrower's possession. Obviously, this is a problem on the way down. That's why it gets so aggressive on the way down. And then on the way up, of course, it helps to build it higher and higher. But people don't know what they're doing. If they're allowed to take a leverage, they think it's a fantastic thing on the way up. It surely is. They keep making more and more and more money. They, they see their account rising and they think it's fantastic. But ultimately, uh, they get burned very fast because most people just don't have that experience or the know-how to do with, you know, actually try to make a little bit of a difference and try to be sort of prudent around this issue. Anyway, this just shows us that there had been, if you, if you read the article, how margin debt is basically accelerated beyond anything we have ever seen before in history. And then you look at this. This is part of that. The market greed and fear index. It is at a historical high. I mean, you can see how it bounces around. But essentially, we're dealing with an extreme greed scenario that to me is not surprising. Just look at what's happening. Look at the, the Jim Cramers of the world and everybody else saying it's simply never going to go down and you have to buy in. They don't explain, though, what the consequences along the way could be. Las Vegas Sands is temporary closing, temporarily closing down its Palazzo Tower Suites. They started to do a small shutdown, you know, just during the week, shut them down. And now they're just simply closing up shop. I mean, this is important because this employs so many people, so many people for one single casino. So just imagine how many will be affected by this in the coming months as well. And to finish the video off, he thought day trading would be a thrill. He ended up losing $127,000. This is just a situation. The individual didn't know what he was doing, didn't have enough education. And so he's making money. He was making good money. And then suddenly things started to turn around for him. So he started to try and make it back. It got even worse. 
lost a lot of money. Then you look at the comments, which you, if you click on here, it'll take you to the video. And then essentially there are several other people who said, I had the same situation. I lost 5,000, I lost 40,000, I lost all this. And they didn't realize the downside risk potential. They were way too far in and unfortunately they got burned. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, hit that thumbs up button. When you do, you are supporting me. I want to thank you for that. If you want to understand e-commerce, everything you need to know is in here how to make money how to learn the whole aspect every aspect uh, to deal with e-commerce is in here for free the amazon gps.com if you want to understand the financial system the central banks how money works all of this explained so simply so easily and it's in these two books check it out at the link in the description if you want the audiobook it's available at the money gps.com wait Hold on a second. Have you seen this? Lots of good detail. Definitely check it out. Click it. I'll see you there.